Now, hello there. Let's talk about what kind of project should be your first project. But so before we proceed, I am uh, running here with uh, two axioms. One is going to be that you would like to learn game development. And second one is that you agree with me that uh, project-based learning is by far the best and fastest way how to learn something. I actually made a video covering that and why I believe that's the best case. So in case you're not sure quite yet, I'm going to link here the other video. Feel free to check it out. Uh, before actually we proceed even further i'm gonna just clarify who i am so you have some idea why you should listen to me or maybe why you should not listen to me uh, my name is Vojta. i have been professional developer for about six years and i have been teaching for past 1.5 years at game ready and i have also just finished my authentication and authorization as a unreal uh, authorized instructor from epic so i got some idea how to teach people and how to develop games now let's talk about what your first game should be like first of all you should of course write a game design document and i'm assuming that uh, since you got here your game design document is already written it's probably gonna be something like gta mmo maybe moba not sure about the moba part you may want to change that around like you know how it goes so let's take it a bit more seriously here uh, first thing first, you can completely ignore the game design documents. You don't, don't care about it. Don't, don't even write it down. If you don't know what game design document is and you are just learning, good. That's good. Keep it that way for now. So now that we have this clarified, let's talk about your first project. Or more likely your first few projects, which is what we get to in a second. I have actually a really nice formula that will help you define your first project. It actually works for any project, but let's focus on your first project for now. So think about the smallest possible game you get. The smallest possible thing. Okay. okay. Now, step two, take that and divide by like 10. 10 times smaller than you are thinking right now. And that's close to how small it should be. So why I'm saying that, and it is absolutely the formula that will work for you, it's because most people overscope, like a lot. We just do tend to have that tendency. I understand that you see all these very cool games on Steam and everywhere else that you would like to really make and work on, but uh, that's just not a good idea on the start. You are going to spend years not really accomplishing anything and just hit your head against the goddamn wall constantly. You do not want to do that. So what you want to do is to focus on making the smallest possible game you can. Ideally, that should be something that you can accomplish in about a week, maybe two weeks. A month is way too much. You should not work on your first project for months. So especially on the start, what you are focusing on most is actually just finishing the project. Because vast majority of the people don't fail in learning the skill, game development in our case, by being stupid but by not finishing it, by quitting halfway in. Motivation is a resource and you have to treat it as that. Be aware that the longer you work on a project, the more your motivation will deplete. No matter how much you think you love the project, how cool it will be, your motivation will deplete. And how you refill this motivation is by finishing project and getting feedback from the project and you getting better and doing it even better the next time. Another aspect that's important to think about here is that 90% of your learning will come from about first 10 or 20% of your work on the project. Uh, it is somewhat weird, but what actually happens is that uh, designing all the systems, figuring out how to do that, it's going to take you most time. That's where most of your project, most, most of your learning will come from. That's where you fail the most. And uh, then you have the polish stage. The polish stage is the remaining 90% after the first ni uh, first 90% of the project. So that, that polishing stage you want to almost completely ignore in your first project because you are learning. You're focusing on learning and finishing projects. That's the only thing you care about. Let's sum up this part a little bit. You need to worry about your motivation. It's a resource and it depletes as you keep on working. Most of the learning comes from the start of the project where you, keep, where you fail the most. So what you want to focus on is finishing your first projects within very short time frame. It's going to be probably a week, maybe two weeks, around there. Let's say you're going to give yourself a deadline for one week and realistically it's going to take like two weeks. That's probably what you, you want to be there. This is probably where you're going to end up, but you really don't want to go over that because uh, when you finish the project, you're going to get motivation for actually finishing something and you can actually get feedback from other people who try it and play it. So now this will motivate you because uh, you have people who actually somewhat enjoy something you made and you finished something and you know much better how to do that again. Really, really good. Both of these, really important. Very small projects, one to two weeks, tops on the start and then keep on going. As you learn more, you can prolong it, but on the start for first 10 projects, for first few projects, focus on that. 
finish first 10 projects actually finished within two weeks. No, that means two weeks for project per project, just to be clear there. And after you do that, we can talk about more. That was uh, more about how you should think about it. And hopefully now you should be able to figure out exactly what kind of projects you should make. But let me give you a few examples what uh, is a bad idea and what is a good idea, especially on the start. Also, just a side note here, when it comes to tutorials, you probably don't want to watch tutorials, almost at all. I cover it in both the video talking about how I would learn Unreal again and the video about why you should, whether you should watch tutorials or not. The answer is probably no, but for more details, watch those videos. Let's start by examples of a really bad first project. Let's call it maybe not beginner projects, but in the end, these are your first projects. And these are applicable to anything, No, not just the game development, of course, but we are focusing on game dev here. Multiplier is a huge no. Don't even think about it. Just don't. Don't. It, just no. No matter how experienced you are, don't. It's gonna like 10x your development time. Just don't. You can ignore most of the procedure, or ignore procedure generation, you don't care about it. If it's more complicated than simple boolean switch, don't. And if you don't know what boolean switch is, then don't do any procedural generation. You want to probably ignore everything that can have a lot of content. So anything that's story driven, anything that requires a lot of different assets, that requires extensive level design, a lot of story, you, you just ignore that, a lot of characters, you don't want any of that. You want to focus on learning and all of these things are under polish. You're just making more characters. You're actually not learning more by making more characters, especially if you are focusing on learning how to make games and not focusing on how to learn how to make characters. Probably ignore all the stuff like uh, RPGs, things that have a lot of stats. Comes back to the previous point, if it has a lot of different uh, data needed, a lot of different content, you probably want to ignore that. Think rather about repeating gameplay, etc. Et now with that, let's transition into what are examples of good first projects. Alright, so you know Mario? First level of Mario, a really good example. Just a simple platformer, it goes up and down, left and right, it's something that can eat you, something you can eat, that's it. Very short, first level should be finishable within 5 minutes. Not the development, but the actual game when you package it. Uh, some horror games tend to be really good. If you want to make horror game, focus on very short horror game. A game that you can uh, finish the whole gameplay within 20-30 minutes, something along that. Uh, simple, simple shooter games, things like Call of Duty, like you have to go into room, shoot all the people. <laughs> Uh, zombie shooters, you have to survive for uh, until they eat you pretty much. Like you don't win really, but you uh, the longer your time, the better you are. Like something with a small leaderboard, you just walk around, you shoot, that's it. Nothing more complicated than that. Remember, finishable within first two weeks. Some endless runners tend to be good examples. Cookie clickers tend to be good examples. Anything that's a older arcade-like game tends to work really well. Think Pac-Man, think uh, Snake. It's actually surprisingly complicated, but uh, think about it in that direction, as simple as possible. Doodle jump, you just jump from point to point. Look at a lot of older arcade games. Those tend to be a really good examples of something that you can do very easily, that have very simple programming, and you will learn a lot, basic, a lot of the basic principles on that. So I would definitely suggest focusing on simple arcade games first. A few more things I would like to mention here. You now should have a pretty good idea, but there is a few more tips, a few more things I would like to mention here uh, that uh, I think will be helpful to you. So first one is uh, build yourself a habit of working daily. Uh, every single day, uh, work on your project for a little bit. It's much, much better to work 30 minutes every day rather than work four hours over the weekend or over on Sunday. Uh, it will just lead to better results and better learning because you remember more. It tends to be a good idea to match it with something that you already do daily, this sort of a habit chaining if you're familiar with the concept. You just want to find yourself something that you already do during your day and then chain this new activity with that. It, gets it, it makes it much easier to actually do. Let's say that you probably eat dinner every single day. Right, then that means after dinner or before dinner, you're gonna always take at least 30 minutes to work on your game. Let's say it's gonna be after dinner, uh, you are gonna prepare your computer, go have a dinner, and then right after that, you're gonna sit down by the computer and do the 30 minutes. Sometimes just 30 minutes, sometimes you end up working more. That's up to you. The point is, figuring out how you can work on it daily. Building this habit is really gonna save you in the long run. The point is to do a little bit every day. Give yourself a deadline. I know that I talked about being able to do it within a week, within two weeks. Uh, that's mainly to uh, prevent overscoping, but you do want to give yourself deadlines. Give yourself deadlines for specific features when you want to have specific parts done and finished. Uh, you probably are going to fail it and you are definitely going to fail at uh, sticking to your deadlines, but that's fine. You fail at it and after you fail, you will be able to adjust it and uh, estimate your deadlines much better next time. It's a very important skill that you want to learn and it's going to keep you on track. 
Right, and the last thing, after you are done with your small game, with your first few small games, remember at least 10 before you do anything other than this, I release it on each. Release it on each, uh, send it to your friends, to your family or whatever. Uh, people will play it, they will enjoy playing it, probably, because they like you. They can say anything else, they like you, that's how we are. And it will make you happy. It will make you happy to see other people play something that you made yourself. That will uh, improve your motivation and that will give you a lot of feedback. Don't worry even about first, the first few of your games to be played by anyone else than your friends and family. If they will, then that's great. But uh, that's about it. I think I made a video about where, to, where you can publish your games. So I'm just gonna link it somewhere here. But uh, that's about it. Enjoy it. Enjoy the process. The whole point is to have fun and enjoy it. Even if you are trying to have this as a career, if you're not gonna enjoy this whole process, there's not really a point in doing that, is it? Make sure that uh, you have other people playing your games. It's gonna make you feel good. And that's nice. Right. Hope this all was helpful to you. And that's about it. I'm gonna disappear. Before that, just a quick thing. I work at Game Ready, it's education coordinator and mentor, uh, where we provide a mentorship to people who want to learn Unreal and game development in general, either for career or indie development. If you are interested in something like that, uh, shoot me an email. I can figure out a way to get you in. I'm gonna be in down in the description. Of course, you don't have to. You can do all of that by yourself. I'm not ever gonna deny that. It can get overwhelming. And again, you can do all of that yourself, but when you do it yourself, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. I certainly did, and I wish I had mentors. So uh, if you would like to have someone like mentor, shoot me an email. All right, have a good one. Wait out. Do you wanna say hi? Um, he decided to say hi, so here we go. Oh, both of you want to say hi. Jesus. Okay. Okay, out. All three of us.